Welcome back to Breakfast Central. Now it's time for us to talk state of the nation. Now, just yesterday, President Bola Tinumbu suspended the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Elevation, Beta Edu, following controversies about financial transactions she authorized in her ministry. Mr. President also had to summon the Minister of Interior, Mr. Ulubumi Tunjiojo, to the presidential villa following allegations of a 438 million naira consultancy contract awarded by the embattled Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, Dr. Betaidu. The Anti-Graft Agency has uh, been busy drilling Edu's predecessor, Sadia Omar Farouk, after she finally honored the invitation of the EFCC over 37 billion naira corruption allegation against her. The EFCC's interrogators also grilled the National Social um, Investment uh, Program Agency uh, suspended National Coordinator and Chief Executive Officer Halima Shehu for long hours. Now, uh, it's, it's been just eight months since the President took over office, yet it's, it's looking like the chains of corruption, you know, still have a stronghold over the progress of the administration. Uh, joining us this morning to speak on this and these latest developments is a human rights, a rights activist and AAC presidential candidate, Omoile Shoare. Uh, good morning and thanks for uh, joining us. Thank you and uh, Happy New Year to our people out there. Mm -hmm. Arguably not very surprising, um, a turn of events uh, you know, that we're seeing. And you know, I said initially that it, it seems like this is the way things have been done for a long time. It's a culture of corruption, it's a culture of, um, of sleaze. The only challenge that we have here is that this one leaked. Do you agree with that and, or, or do you think that you know, the president is just unfortunate to have you know, these bits and pieces here and there that are, are tainting his image? <laughs> no, at all. Uh, this is what they came to do. They came to uh, take care of themselves, and that's what they went to work to do. And you can tell that if you follow the trajectory of how they got here, uh, apparently Betaidu was reporting or, uh, uh, on her predecessor, you know, telling on the stories of how she was stealing money and the ESCC was busy. I think that was a distraction. Why she took a page from her book of sleeves and started her own scams. And, but there's nothing new here. This is what these guys and these major political parties are all about. It's about taking care of themselves, taking money, sharing among themselves. So there's nothing surprising there. And what you're getting is the usual showboating. The administration needs to prove that they are not as bad as people make them feel. So you see some suspension here and there. But I don't know of anywhere within the administration or the regime that there is no sleaze going on. So this, uh, this guy's a bunch of sleaze bags. Is this indicative of uh, the president's ability to quote unquote select the right people? Because there's that no was way. one of the things there's, that they argued. You know, there's for... no way to get the right people when you are not the right person. Right. Yes. Okay, so now let's move away from uh, that conversation and talk about uh, Olubumi Tunjiojo and his involvement, unfortunately, in this report. He's why, been do praised. Say, why do you say it's unfortunate? Why I say unfortunately is because of all the ministers that we've had, he's one of the ministers that has, been, that has come highly praised because of the reforms because he's making. Because he's giving you passports that you paid for, that you're entitled to? No. That's, you see, this is part of our problem as a people. There's so much mediocrity in our system, a mediocrity in our system, that we take for granted that these people are appointed or elected to do some jobs. And when they do it, you start praising them. This is what they are appointed to do. You have several ministries under the interior affairs, you have prisons, you have all kinds of problems in the country. So the minister is not actually supposed to be in charge of handing out passports. That's the job of the immigration uh, department. And if that is happening, that is what should be happening. Nobody should be denied of their passport. So if you're getting your passport, why do you praise the minister? Well, because what was there before, there were people there, there were ministers yeah, there that's, before, that's, and was, what was obtainable was no, mad do, do with you, corruption. Do you know that in other parts of the world, I'm not talking about even the West now, here in Africa, people get passports mailed to their houses, they apply for it online, and you get it in the mail. You get your passport in the U.S. from the post office. You don't, I don't know who the minister or the secretary is in the U.S. that is in charge of handing out passports. I know the postmaster in my area who does that. And if you want to get a passport and I'm not in town, they will ask me as a father of my kids to go to the embassy here to approve that they could get a passport. 
So, so it's a seamless process, and that's what it should be. That's what we pay for. But we are not even talking about the security of the passport. Who are the people producing the Nigerian passport? You don't even know. It's somewhere in Singapore or, you know, I don't know, somewhere in, you know, in the Middle East or Asia. So nobody's talking about that. We're not in control and in charge of any of these things. But we're here praising a guy who is just came into office and letting passport get to you, something you desire. But we still have prisoners who are underfed, the wrong yes. people detained and imprisoned that we're not talking about. The immigration department is just one of the departments under the Internal Affairs Ministry. So the minister's hand is caught in a cookie jar, and you don't want us to talk about it because you're getting a passport that well, you should get. Um, That's why I'm, I'm saying that because you said it's unfortunate. It's nothing unfortunate. He knew about this. Why was it that the contract, why was it not given to you? Because they're all part of this lease that's going on. And this is not the first time. There was an allegation against this guy that he didn't even have NYC. He produced one, special NYC discharge certificate. I don't have one, and I can't produce one, but I completed my NYC years ago. But they said he diverted money that was made for southern part of Ondo State to his own part of the state. Nobody is asking about that. They're talking about, oh, he came, he's doing passports. That's not what we're talking about. It's, we're talking about the resources maybe... of the country that's been looted by these people. And sometimes I think they deliberately get us involved in this whole conversation so that we are distracted from serious social political issues in the country. So every regime that comes around, we fire somebody at the beginning of the regime and make it look as if, you know, they call them four guys. And then you make it look as if they are serious, and then you forget about the real issues. And before you know it, they keep you know, producing these distractions from time to time. So are you so saying that yes. if a person comes into office, or an administration comes into office, and things were done wrongfully before, and I completely agree with you that the picture you have painted is what ought to be, but yeah. what is is a far cry from what ought to be. So are you saying that when an administration comes in or a person comes in, and they're doing the work to return things to what ought to be. We shouldn't applaud them. No, I'm saying that before they came into office, they actually were the ones who caused the problem. Oh, look, the, the, the no, the, the, the political problem. party that created the problem okay. is this party. The APC has been in power for how many years? Eight years before now. Olubuyo Joe himself was uh, in the National Assembly. National Assembly. So what, what is new? These guys are the same guys the same network of people, the same manpower. So they recruit from that pool. That's where they got all these Betty, you know, Better and all of from. They're all part of the APC machinery. This, this is not the first. You are just hearing about them now because, you know, they're probably a little bit overexposed. This is what they do. You know, passing money and sharing money. That's what they do in National Assembly. That's what they do in the, at the state levels. That's what they do everywhere. But, you know, they just got overexposed. That's why somebody is flying from Abuja to Lokoja. They must have forgotten that there's no airport there. But that's the culture of impunity. You know, people get so, they get so caught up in it, they get away with so much, that at times they even forget the minutia of what is wrong, you know. Otherwise, you would at least remember that you can't fly from Abuja to Lokoja. Yeah. Right. Because there's no airport there. Except if there's a seaplane. But then where did it take off from Abuja, you know, uh, to land in uh, the confluence uh, there? But this Shabu, is what they Shabu. do, and that's why I'm saying getting things right is not this way. Because this is what we pay for as taxpayers. That's why people get elected and appointed into office. Not to come and show off, it's to do things right. And they know they're the ones who cause the problem. So probably that was the reason why they were able to convince people that they are doing the right things, because they caused the problem in the first place. They are the ones who got your passport uh, messed up in such a way that you can't get it. And then they come around and offer a few passports. So, so, are, say, oh, so are you, are you, is your argument then that there's nothing to commend, you know, nothing, even with, the, nothing, even with yeah. the suspension of Bataille Do, uh, the there's, suppose look, the president for has every, for, It's Yudu. a revolving door. You remove a better I Do, there's going to be a better, better who can still better that will come in. This is what Buhari did when he came into office. You know, the whole initial garagara, as we call it. Oh, this person has been, there was even, at that point, they used to say that Buhari had body language. He didn't need to speak. And things <laughs> were falling in place. <laughs> and then suddenly, look at what the body language turned Nigeria into. 
So there's always an excuse from us as a people to just make things not work the way they should. Instead of holding people's feet to fire, we start praising little little things that don't matter. Yeah, it might be a trauma, not trauma governance. response, you know, from the average Nigerian. Because, no, you know, it's not. You, what what is you, an average Nigerian looking for? You know, you talk about passport. How many Nigerians travel? You know, how many people need passport? We have 200 million people. We are talking about maybe a few million people who apply to get passports, who can afford to travel. What about the 190 million more who are living on a dollar per day? Why are we not talking about that? How about their schools, their roads? I mean, don't you see what is going on? There are people who are stuck in their villages as yeah. we speak because they can't afford to come back after Christmas and New Year's. And we are here talking about people who are sharing money. And who are still sharing money as we speak? They're going to be sharing money, this money, to the NNPC, customs, immigration. They're going to be stealing money at uh, the central bank this money. There's going to be money moving around. So they are happy that you are distracted. Right? That, oh, there's one beta I do that's just been suspended and everybody's happy about it. Like I said, there are thousands of beta I do's there. And yeah, the, big, but, the big kahuna himself, this is what they used to do in Lagos before they moved to Abuja. It's a little scary. Sharing money. Know, big, big, and this is a little scary. And I probably would like to know what, um, if, if you were in that position, you yes. know, how, what would be the first steps? to tackle a situation like this. The, the government, of course, you know, cannot be everywhere at the same time. So let me, let me tell you a secret on how this, what is happening now is happening. When the Tinubu regime came to power, they enacted a supplementary budget. Yes. Huge amount of money was allocated. They must finish that money by March. You understand? So they must finish that money by March. It is that money that's sharing now that got everybody entangled now. And they have a new budget that's coming in. So that money is what they're trying to finish. Are you getting my point? So nobody's talking about this. They must exhaust their supplementary, supplementary budget. But why set up a supplementary budget only to be stolen? It's what I wouldn't have done as a regime. And I would not have allowed this kind of abuse to take place because, as I always say, before we go to enforcement, we ought to have primary prevention in place. Why should a minister have the power to allocate money to a private account? If that system is still there where you can just take money and give hand out to someone, then you are not in, you are not in government. I mean, you're so, just in so, power. So, so what you're saying is that you wouldn't have gone for the supplementary budget? If the, what was the need for the supplementary budget when there was, before you came to office, there was already a budget covering 2023. And that budget had not been exhausted. But you came in and put a supplementary budget in place Part of it was scandalous. You had to go and repair the damn barracks, buy a yosh. And they said it without beating an eye that they already bought the yosh on credit. <laughs> okay. And I was saying, I've never seen Tinubu inside a cane or talk less of being in a yosh. Why are you buying a yosh? But it was when they started the supplementary project, they had planned what you saw now. And that's why I'm saying the part you saw about Betway Do and that's probably the smallest part of it. The big item budgets with National Assembly that recently increased the budget by themselves by several billions, if not trillions. They are, this list is going on as we speak. It hasn't stopped. It's not like after removing they do all, yeah. everybody removed their hands from that the cookie jar. The cookie jar. Everybody's still stealing. Okay. Yes. They, they, they did give an explanation about the uh, presidential yacht and how you know it had already been purchased, but it wasn't a yacht in the sense of it being a yacht, but you know had other uh, functions. We'll come back to that. Let's talk about now cutting the cost of governance. Yes. Would you consider the president slicing travel expenditure by sixty percent as a step in the right direction? What is what is sixty percent? Is the question the media ought to be asking. Yes. Yeah, I mean, exactly. the, the bank had reported about 15 billion okay. um, for 2024. Uh -huh. um, I think it was, um, I'm not sure maybe it was the punch or so, that, or the cable that reported about, you know, 7 billion or so. Okay. Um, so there are conflicting figures, but exactly. you know, it runs into billions. So nobody knows what it is. This is part of what I say is distraction, and people don't ask questions. So when you see 60%, are you cutting the number of people that travel? Yeah, that's them? one. Uh -huh. And how many usually should travel? Yeah, you don't that's know. why we, don't, we do not exactly. have a collective so, if you are going to the United Nations, for instance, and you take 600 people with you, and you have cut it by 60%, how many people are those? 
you know, you're still taking with you people who have no business going to the United Nations. How does that help you? What if you caught it on the surface and you're going to hide it somewhere else, like you did with COP, uh, is it COP25? Yeah. 28. Yeah. 28. Yeah. You know, you had ministries, departments of government still bringing in people who have definitely nothing to do but to go and collect Esther codes. So these things are not as clear as they should be. And that's why the media has a role to ask these questions and to keep an eye on them. I'm hoping that yeah. we can actually get across to Ajirin Gelali and he'll be willing to grant us an interview. But let's take a look at his explanation of what exactly is being caught when, it, when we refer to travel expenditure being caught by 60%. It will be conducted in the following fashion. One, the official trips that will be undertaken within the country, that is, when Mr. President or the Vice President travels to any state within the country, the massive bills that accrued due to allowances and ESTA code for security detail coming from Abuja, going and traveling into those states, will be massively cut due to the directive of the President that the security outfits within states, whether it be police, DSS, or branches of the military, will frontline his protective detail when he travels to those states. Additionally, when any international travel uh, is being approved, uh, the following limits have been placed on all ministers of the Federation. Four members of their staff, uh, appointees and the like, uh, will be allowed to travel with a minister on an official trip. For heads of agency, that will be limited to two members of staff allowed to travel on an official trip. Furthermore, the, the numbers that the President has now approved uh, for official travel with him that will apply to his principal staff uh, are as follows. On international trips, the President has directed that no more than 20 individuals be allowed uh, to travel with him. That number will be cut down to five in the case of the First Lady. Twenty for the President, five for the First Lady. Additionally, the number in the entourage on official international trips for the Vice President will be cut to five. The number that will be uh, limited, the number that will be placed uh, as a limit uh, on the wife of the Vice President is also five. In terms of local trips, the President has approved a new limit of 25 members of staff. All right. Um, that uh, Ajirin Galali there breaking down the adjustments to the President's travel team and how, you know, he says has been cut down by 60%. I just want to remind everyone of the convoy that escorted the President to the mosque. Um, Two Fridays ago, I think, you know. Yeah, there's uh, another Friday. Uh, Fridays ago. Yes. Exactly. And, and that was a convoy of, you know, a, a billion SUVs. <laughs> um, so I just to quickly mention that. Um, um, Mr. I'm, I'm sure. I, so, so do you, are you impressed with this? Is, no, is this, not um, at all. So what, what you don't know, but some of us know, is that when the president is traveling anywhere, he takes with him governors, ministers. He doesn't have control over how many people the governors take with him. So this is how these guys operate. But they also have an advanced team of over 40 people sometimes that will go secure hotels, scan areas, security people. All these people need to be eliminated. Any country where you have an embassy shouldn't need an advanced team. And when they said four people need to travel with the minister, why? Why do you need four people? Can't the minister travel by himself? When he was a minister, he was traveling by himself. Why can't he now travel by himself? But it's beyond just the president. It's a culture of waste in the country. Ask yourself, how many policemen, DSS, soldiers are attached to a governor? Every governor has yeah. over 200 of these guys. And all of them, when they're traveling, somehow must be placed on the trip. Whether they're traveling or not, it's all about how to steal how to share resources. And until these things are comprehensively addressed, you're not going to get all these ones are just, this is what they told Lungali to go and say. You know, he doesn't know any better. You get my point. And when he's done saying it, 
the people who are traveling, or some of them who have traveled have not even come back. Do you know that under this regime, there are ministers in the regime who are serving as coppers? NYC coppers? Yes. Can you share something? Yes, uh, what's her name? Musawa is a copper. As a minister of oh. youth, who has been based in the UK ever since the regime started. Somebody is paying for her bills to stay there. We all just came back from the Undo State scandals, right? Yes. When we were saying in that these guys were lying, that Akedolu wasn't coming back, the media was presenting, some media, not all of it, and I give the credit to you guys, was presenting a different uh, you know, angle, that the man was recovering, is on his way back, you know, the wife was meeting with House of uh, Assembly members. But we kept saying that, with due respect, based on what we know, this guy is not well enough to return back to power. Hand over. Now that has been resolved, naturally. So when we are telling you these things, these are things we know. Now, what you are hearing or what they are presenting is different from what will happen even as soon as the press conference is over. The president doesn't have control over these people. It's part of a power and money sharing process to travel with the president, you know, so that you can come and get us. He mentioned Esther This is all about Esther Codes. And by the next trip, no, but whoever, they have planned it, is, and more people will travel. Yeah, but I mean, but isn't it possible that whoever is in charge of the president's itinerary, you know, would then be able to cut down the number of Because who... it's not only one person that's in charge. It's various interests, cabals. Oh, well, yes. that's a different thing. And there's also the office of the first lady there that is. Exactly. Well. Why, are you, why, why do we have an office of the first lady when it's not even constitutional? So people are speaking as if the first lady has a right to travel. Don't forget that there's a first lady, there's a first son. And there's the first daughter in the Tinubu regime. All of them have their offices, and you can't cut their travel, <laughs> their travel team. Well, this there's is so the first. This is the first president to have all of that, you know. And yeah. I heard he has a first in law too. Really? Are, yeah. are they all? Are this confirmed? Of course. That they are all being. Paid? Uh, is it not confirmed that there's a the first daughter, there's a the first son, Shei, and the Yaloja of Lagos, and the husband of one of the daughters is also. Have, they, have, they all have offices in Abuja. Well, that's, that that's, that's arguable. Because it's not arguable. I'm talking to you based on what I know. You know right. Like, I keep yeah. reminding you guys, you know, I'm a journalist, too, even though I might have come through the back door because I didn't train as a journalist. But as you can respect some of these opinions because they're fact-based. And I'm glad that you mentioned you're a journalist yeah. because I'm sure that that can help with the next question. It's impossible for us to have conversations about the state of the nation without talking insecurity. Yeah. Uh, we've been hearing of kidnap cases on the increase in Abuja. Mm. Yeah. And there have been unconfirmed reports, I cannot confirm them, of um, some people saying that they've seen bodies, headless bodies on the express around Ogun State. I've seen a number of comments like that on social media. I cannot confirm them. I don't know if you can. So talk to us about the state of insecurity in Nigeria and what the way forward is. This, this, this is the reason why I said some of these issues you are saying are just distractions. Because there are serious social political issues. The people who are behind the security are like fully back in business. Even in, my, in our state, in those states, you read about how the Amotekun that they set up has been overwhelmed. And yeah. yes, there's more kidnapping now. Kidnapping has become a daily occurrence in different parts of uh, the federal capital territory, Abuja. And you're hearing about more armed robberies happening you know, to even student hostels across the country. And nobody's talking about it. So we're talking about these issues because that's what they throw at you so that they can hide the main issues affecting. So if you are seeing headless bodies, that's because more and more of these guys have been emboldened. Because I guess yeah. the problem of security has been abandoned for problem, I mean, to share money and to talk about how they're sharing money. It's serious and nothing has changed that I think things are getting worse on the in, in, in security side. Plateau State. Yes. Final, finally, um, I, would, I mean, we're, we're, still, we're still talking about Plateau State, yeah. where over 200 people were killed. And it's, it's not as if the killings have stopped. There's still, there's still a lot of skirmishes going on. They're taking over villages, renaming them. And nobody's talking about this. Um, finally, um, I saw you did, you did a video, um, you posted a video on Doyo Okukwe and um, uh, the Labour Party in general, you, know, yeah. you call it a place for internally displaced politicians. Um, there are still millions of people who have faith in Labour Party, looking forward to 2027, hoping that, of course, they can pull the same energy again. Do you think it's likely to happen again? I'm not in the Labour Party. 
the reason I responded that way was because Doyo Kupwe resigned. Yeah. And uh, I recall Doyo Kupwe calling me to support the Labour Party. And I was asking myself, if I had respected him enough to join the Labour Party, would it mean that I would be following him now to his next destination? And I've always described the Labour Party as an Airbnb, you know, short renter. Everybody, you know, they use it uh, in Ondo State before to bring Mimiko into office. After a while, he abandoned and went back to PDP. It's usually where the PDP and APC people go to, where they are just going to. And you look at the Labour Party now, and all the elected officials, they are the first set of people to collect the 160 million Naira SUV. SUVs. So what is it? They just use the party to get whatever they want, and they abandon the party. The video that I shared was before even the Labour Party went to, where Peter Abu went to the Labour Party, because I had always known that is what the Labour Party is all about. And I said, Dunyo Kupwe has uh, proven us right. So what I'm saying is that all of them are the same. Labour Party, APC, PDP, they call them AAC. APC, PDP, LP. AAC, AAC is different, <laughs> yes. AAC would never, if we had anybody in National Assembly, would never have accepted the 160 million. If anybody did, would have expelled the person from our party. So right. that's not our ideology. So in all of this, as quickly <laughs> as possible, in 30 yeah. seconds, is there nothing to be excited about? To say, okay, at least this is the one ray of hope the, in this administration. This is, this is January. If you're excited about anything, tell it to the public. Well, I'm the one asking the question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can assume the role of journalists now. Let's ask ourselves a question since so we're closing uh, the show. Well, There's nothing to be excited about. You know, the economy is in shambles. The value of the currency is in shambles. We're talking about insecurity. People have woken up to the reality that nothing has changed. Things have gotten worse. And we're not making it up. This is the daily reality that our people are facing. So you are in a country where minimum wage is still 30,000 naira. Oh, there's yeah. conversations about increasing yeah, that. Where yeah, we're going so. to fund it, we're not sure. And, no, there's, uh, no, no don't, let, don't let anybody argue about yeah. funding. There's in, more than enough, based on what we're even hearing about how they're sharing money. Doesn't it surprise you that somebody can walk away with that 7 billion, there's another 50 billion somewhere. The former Akata General of Nigeria is still 109 billion. We haven't heard much about that. Yes. Before. He was detained briefly, and now he's some high-ranking traditional ruler yeah. in the north. So there's more than enough to go around, but well, there's no way you can fulfill the needs of the greedy. It's not possible. Mr. Omoyele Showari, it's always a delight to have you. Thank, Thank you very you. much for joining us to discuss the state of the nation.